Well, it's morning at the Eastern Anchorage here in Cape May. I had noticed late in the afternoon yesterday that one of the rudders was not performing properly. This is the port side rudder. It works fine. And that steering cable sticking out, it works fine. This is the cassette for the starboard side rudder. I took the rudder out. The steering cable that's sticking out there is not working fine. For whatever reason, the end there is stuck. So I disconnected it from the cassette. I lack the proper tools to take the cable apart right now. I need at least an inch wrench and probably a set of vice grips to try to open up the end of that. So I disabled it for now. The other interesting thing is I opened up behind the helm and found the steering box. It's a gear set and it has provisions in it for each of the two cables that steer the boat. I did discover that on the steering box end, both of the cables are fine. Both move appropriately when you turn the wheel. Uh, no binding, nothing like that. So at this point, I'm guessing that the brake is two parts. One, the cable is broken somewhere internally uh, for the starboard side steering cable, which would explain why it still works okay at the helm. And then second part, and I may be wrong about this, but I think that the solid end of the cable is stuck, which may be why the cable broke in the first place. I don't know. Um, in any case, I have one good steering cable. And because of the way the steering system on this boat works, I'm up Schitt's Creek. What do I mean by that? Well, I do have one working rudder. That's good. By disabling the other rudder, it's not going to conflict with whatever this rudder's doing. So that's okay. But this motor is steered by little strings that are pulled by the rudder cassettes. Without the rudder cassettes both articulating, the motor is not going to turn. At best, it'll turn the boat to port when this rudder pulls that way to port, the motor will turn to port. But then there'll be nothing pulling it back to center line or pulling it to starboard. Well, that's not going to work. I'm not going to get myself a cable overnight, so I'm going to try to set it up so that I can steer both rudders and possibly also the motor using one steering cable and a little bit of magic. As you know, I don't have a lot of tools on this boat. I should have more tools on this boat. I had the chance to grab a whole bunch, but I didn't. Before I shot down here, I just grabbed a handful of screwdrivers, pliers, little things I thought I might need, but I don't have a lot of tools. One thing I don't have is a rasp. What I do have is a ratchet with a nice knurled end on it. Mmm. I'm using it to booger out the inside of these shackles just a little bit. In their current size and shape, they almost fit over the ends of the stainless steel tubes on the rudder cassettes, almost. So if I just take away a little bit of material, they should slide right on. So there we go. That's on there very tight. Kind of banged it down a little bit with my special hammer. Just off the edge of the steel tube. I still have no idea what these are for. Well, I guess someday it'll occur to me why they're there. I think they're actually connected all the way through the rudder cassette down and around and come back up again. I think. Anyway, uh, so that's on. I'm gonna do the other one and then we'll move on. And there's the second one. So here's what I've come up with. This pole was used for some sort of awning or a canopy. I don't know what the thing is. It's got a big old rainbow design on it. But anyway, I don't know what that's for. I don't even know how to rig it, so I'm happy to use this pole. My other option was the spinnaker pole, but that's bigger, thicker, heavier, maybe stronger for sure, but I'd rather not use that if I can avoid it. I'm gonna see if I can get away with using this expanding pole. Right now, the only thing holding the two halves together is that little bit of blue painter's tape, which I just put on there for sizing and uh, for real quick testing purposes. Why well, yes, 
I am cutting this broomstick with a steak knife. Okay. Broomstick. That's the rest. I actually found the bread knife was better at cutting the wood than the steak knife. Why did I do this? Okay. I measured this out. This is the thicker of the two poles. And I figured out how far the thinner of the two poles has to sit inside the thick pole to be the proper length for my chinned up steering solution. This represents the additional length inside the big pole. So I'm going to put this in the big pole and what that'll do is put this inside here. One, it'll add a little bit of strength uh, to help prevent the entire pole system from bending a little bit. But two, and more importantly, uh, it will provide uh, assurances that these two poles won't collapse together. Because the thinner pole has this like rubber stopper thing, plastic stopper thing. That'll sit up against the edge of the wood and it will basically ensure that this entire pole system maintains a, uh, a minimum length. If I pop this in here, Slide that in the way it belongs. It bottoms out and it is exactly at the mark that I made earlier for where I want this to be. If I have something that'll fit inside the thin pole, I may try to put something inside there just to brace that up and give it a little bit more strength. I'm not sure that's necessary, but I'll take a look around. Okay, it turns out I don't have anything that I can fit inside this smaller pole um, and I can't get the ends off and I don't want to risk damaging anything further. So I'm not going to do that. I also don't have any duct tape, so my MacGyver skills are clearly lacking, but I'm going to use a little bit of medical bandage tape just to build up a small layer here. And then I also have this waterproof thinner medical stuff. And I'm going to wrap it all around and around and around. It's kind of the way you would uh, wrap a hockey stick or something. The piece of wood inside this post, this pole is going to keep them from compressing, collapsing together. And then I'm going to run a rope system end to end uh, between the two rudder cassettes to prevent it from telescoping the other way uh, and expanding. So the tape won't add a whole lot of value, but I'll feel better having it on there. So that's layer one. There's layer two, overlapping layer one and the thicker pole. Okay, there's layer three. That's the first layer with the waterproof tape. And there's the final layer, obviously wound in the opposite direction. And then just for good measure, a few cable ties just to hold fast to the tape, maybe preventing it from trying to unravel. Okay, the bar is in place and the shackles are tightened down, the, uh, the pin. And the only other thing I need to do to this piece of the solution is to use some of this seizing wire through the hole in the shackle pin. I'm sure there are better ways to do this, but I'm also sure I don't know what those ways are. So that's what I'm doing. One thing to note, I do believe that these plastic ends to the force bar pole are one of many weak links in this system. They're part of the reason why I'm going to actually attach a rope from this cassette to the other one, um, because I don't know what kind of force it takes to pull this out of the end of the tube, so I need to be sure that there's uh, something else that's holding these two ends together. 
and that's going to be our rope. All right, well, there's the rope. Just have it twining around the pole here. It's tight to the pole, but I don't think it's binding it up at all or putting any tension on it, twisting tension or anything like that. Is that a thing, twisting tension? And then over here, I just kind of tied it up. But anyway, I think the pole itself will probably handle the pulling motion, but this rope adds an extra measure of safety. And then the fact that it's wrapped around the pole gives me a little bit of confidence that if for some reason the pole slides off the ends of the cassette somehow, maybe I'll be able to retain it with this rope. Don't know. It's good to note that if I do get underway and I want to pull the motor up, I can. The pole does not interfere with the motor at all, whether it's up or down. I found that to put the engine up for sailing purposes, I have to disconnect the engine's steering lines. Now, the engine's steering lines gave me fits all the time because they would come out of that little jammer and then it would be super loose. So what I did was I tied a figure eight knot at the proper location in each of these ropes. There's one sitting there. And on the rear hull, I put these little double-ended clip hooks. So when you put the engine up for sailing purposes, you have to take this out of the hook so that there's no binding. But that also gives you reduced effort on steering and on the autopilot, and I think that's good. Okay, with the engine in the down position, you'll see that I hooked up the ropes. So I have the loop from the figure eight knot there into the little spring clip hook. Same thing over here. And the steering works pretty well. The engine turns. It doesn't turn as much as I'd like it to, but that's as much as the geometry of this system will allow. The rotors only turn so much, and therefore the engine only turns so much. There's a little bit of binding over there that you hear. That's the rudder up against the rub rail, believe it or not. Uh, I don't know what to do about it. Probably nothing. But anyway, I'm back to full functionality here. The only thing I don't have is a solid backup plan if the single steering cable decides that it doesn't want to work for me anymore. Maybe it's doing the work of two. In which case, I guess what I'll do is unbolt this steering cable from the rudder cassette and I will bind up, I don't know, a boat hook or something to one of these two rudders and I will use it as a tiller. Don't know what else I can do. Well, that didn't last long. I'm down to one rudder. Ah, boy. As I feared might happen, the on that, that little black plastic and pulled out of the tube. And now it's just sitting there attached to the rudder cassette and the tube I have just propped up on top of the motor right now. So only the port side rudder is actually steering. Um, I guess I get some steering out of the starboard rudder uh, when I'm turning to port because the rope is still going to pull a bit. Uh, but for the most part, it's useless when I'm trying to go to starboard. And the same can be said for steering the motor itself. So anyway, I, I managed to bind this end of the pole back. So I have a little bit more steering again. It's not great. Um, it turns out that that plastic end did in fact snap. So we'll see what happens. I, I made the rope that runs along it tighter, so hopefully I don't end up snapping the other one. Uh, I don't know. Temporary solution is temporary, that's for damn sure. So I parked the cat real quick in the waves here to take the mainsail down and to pull up the centerboard that was down. I took a look over here. We had failure of our bindings. So I just quick wrapped it with my belt. Our sloppy steering is not doing so well. At this point, I just hope it doesn't let go. Okay, I'm just see where this is going. I can see the bridge over there. I'm gonna make a right into some little anchorage right by Rum Point. That happens to be before that bridge. Assuming I can steer this thing enough to get it in there. 
Oh, this is insanity. Oh, God. If I had proper steering, I wouldn't care. Whew. Look at the condition of this. The end snapped off and wrapped the rope around it. The binding somehow got loose in some manner. I don't know. I kind of did it in a rush and it seemed to work for a couple hours. I wrapped it up with my belt. Just give it something else. And even that looks loose now. Well, good morning. Um, yep, so I slept in a little bit. I really need to catch up on some sleep. I was really stressed out yesterday because Basically, it was. I started out with two foot seas, uh, ended up with four to five uh, towards the end, which is no problem for this boat. Boat handled it admirably, uh, with the exception of the steering. Uh, steering came apart right before I got into the worst of it. Well, I removed my belt, but this is the woeful condition of the steering arm. You can see I even tried wrapping just blue painter's tape around it just to hold things together so I wouldn't drop the pole. This was all while I was bouncing up and down in apparently four to five foot seas. This end still holding just fine. Now didn't I mention that I thought that the little black plastic piece at the end of the pole would be at least one of the weak links? Well it turns out I was absolutely right. It snapped. I was just thinking about my desperate attempt last night of wrapping this mess with something, anything. And I went with painter's tape because that's all I had. Trying to fix a broken boat with basically paper. <laughs> so here's what's left here of my masterpiece. Um, it still has a piece of plastic and some sort of metal thing inside there. But this is the rest of it still attached to the shackle. It's broken clean off there. So I'm going to try to kind of put these back together and then reinforce them so that they hold together. Basically, I just want to use this to maintain the position of the pole. I don't expect it to give me any actual strength, even when jammed together. It slips in there very loosely. So what I did here is I took this piece and I put a stopper knot here, figure eight stopper, and a figure eight stopper here. And I ran it through here and back and around itself between the stoppers and then I did another loop that came back and just went around the arm on the cassette for good measure ran that back and just kind of tied it off here and put a stopper knot on the end just in case things get a little loose now this in and of itself isn't going to necessarily hold this whole pole together and well there's a temporary fix those clamps squeeze the rope and basically creates friction I hope so that nothing here slides this loop here goes around the shackle bolt it uh, basically does double duty what this piece of plastic does and then there's another loop that goes here and around the cassette arm and back it's basically just extra insurance